welcome to our daily gospel reflection. My name is Maureen Demler. I serve as deacon at St. George's Episcopal Church in Clifton Park, New York. Let us pray. O oh God, from whom all good proceeds, grant that by your inspiration we may think those things that are right and by your merciful guiding may do them. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Our reading for today comes from the Gospel according to Matthew, the 16th chapter, beginning at the 21st verse. After Peter's confession, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him and began to rebuke him saying, God forbid, Lord, this shall never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a hindrance to me, for you are not on the side of God, but of men. Then Jesus told his disciples, If any man would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his life? Or what shall a man give in return for his life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay every man for what he has done. Truly I say to you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Here ends the reading. I'm recording this on Wednesday before our Bishop William Love faces his Episcopal Church hearing panel this Friday, the date of this Gospel reflection. Today, we hear Peter, after proclaiming Jesus to be the Messiah, the Son of the living God, rebuking Jesus after Jesus reveals for the first time what will happen to him in Jerusalem. I relate so well to today's story of Peter. I believe Jesus is the Son of God and have vowed to be loyal to the doctrine, discipline, and worship of Christ. But taking up a cross? What does that mean? If we want to know what it means, we have only to follow Peter's life story. After a rocky start with his denial of Jesus before the crucifixion, Peter was present for the anointing of the Holy Spirit and went right out Pentecost day to preach about Jesus. Tradition claims that he was eventually crucified himself in Rome. For an example closer to home, we only need look towards our bishop. He was ordained a priest, vowing to be a faithful pastor, and apparently, <clears throat> reluctantly, was elected bishop of the Albany Diocese. We trust that the Holy Spirit called him to this work. Bishop Bill vowed to boldly proclaim and interpret the gospel of Christ. In doing so, he took up his cross. 
I, like Peter in today's reading, too often set my mind not on divine things, but on human things. Bishop Bill over the years has seemed to have had his mind set consistently on divine things. He, like I, had solemnly declared that I do believe the Holy Scriptures of the Old and New Testaments to be the Word of God and to uh, contain all things necessary to salvation. We see now what taking up a cross entails. Those who work to avoid death have nothing, while those who sacrifice for the kingdom of God are immersed in everlasting life. In his Sermon on the Mount, Jesus establishes an absolute choice. Enter through the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and the road is easy that leads to destruction, and there are many who take it. For the gate is narrow and the road is hard that leads to life, and there are few who find it. I'd like to close with a portion of Psalm 26. Give judgment for me, O Lord, for I have lived with integrity. I have trusted in the Lord and have not faltered. Test me, O Lord, and try me. Examine my heart and my mind. For your love is before my eyes. I have walked faithfully with you. I will wash my hands in innocence, O Lord, that I may go in procession round your altar, singing aloud a song of thanksgiving and recounting all your wonderful deeds. Lord, I love the house in which you dwell and the place where your glory abides. As for me, I will live with integrity. Redeem me, O Lord, and have pity on me. My foot stands on level ground. In the full assembly, I will bless the Lord. Mm -hmm.